Yo, what's going on guys? Have a cute now. Back. Today we finally have episode 2 of this series that I made an episode for, but I never did a part 2. A lot of you have been asking about this series. I mean, you started a series, so continue it, Havoc. Well, here we are. Today we're going to be going over 10 types of Clash of Clans players. As I mentioned, this is part 2, so if you want to watch part 1, it'll be at the end of the video and also in the description below. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Player who does one challenge in the clan games for the rewards. Hey, hey, keep it down. You guys got cameras in my house? Don't lie, you've probably done it too. Sometimes it's just not that weak, you know. It's just not that weak. And sometimes, I am that guy. Trust me, you're that guy. Sorry, not sorry. As I've mentioned, I just get busy sometimes, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So, when Clan Games comes around in one of those busy weeks, luckily, all I have to do is one challenge. <laughs> Life's good. I'd like to say that my clan is pretty active, so when I do just one challenge, I mean, everything seems okay. Before we move on, this video is kindly sponsored by Rise of Kingdoms. Rise of Kingdoms is a real-time strategy game with a variety of civilizations you can choose from. There are 12 civilizations in the game, Rome, Germany, Ottoman, Byzantium, Vikings, and etc. Every civilization has its unique soldiers, architectures, commanders, and its own buff. Like a traditional strategy game, you can also upgrade your buildings, train your soldiers, cultivate your commanders, and research technologies to improve your combat power. Yes, you are as powerful as you think. Whoa. The battle scenes in Rise of Kingdoms are also incredibly realistic and awesome, and you can experience distinctive soldiers and generals of 12 different civilizations. Thanks to different talents and characteristics, they can counter each other which gives them a stronger strategic experience. I'm super stoked to be joining the events called the ROK12 Civilizations Competition Final Round. I'm going to be choosing to support the Vikings this time around because I think they're pretty dank. And also, I think their personality kind of matches with me, you know? Make sure to download Rise of Kingdoms for free and vote for your favorite civilization. In doing so, you'll have a chance to win prizes such as an iPhone 13, AirPods Pro, and etc. Links will be down below. So, with that being said, back to the video. The Requester. Ah, yes, the guy who's always asking for troops but doesn't donate. The fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> There's always that one guy, right? Then the leader's always reminding them to fix their ratio when they never do. Yeah. Now, I'm not the best clan leader, so I wouldn't say I know how to handle a clan, but if I had players who only request and never help others out, uh, I'm gonna... <laughs> okay, not really. A good member should always keep a pretty good ratio, you know? Like, if you have 5,000 receives, there's no reason you should have... 100 donations. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> the offline grinder, the one who just collects resources, you know, never attacks from collectors and upgrade stuff. I think this guy's been spying on me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not that guy. Okay, sometimes I am. I have these busy weeks sometimes where I just don't have time to play, so I end up logging on, collecting my resources, and seeing what I can afford, like I just found 50 cents on the street and went to the bodega. Most of the time, it's just a trap. I gotta upgrade for the 10th time. Or some walls, you know. I'm sure we've all been there. I don't have time to play, but let me see if I have enough to upgrade something at least, you know? That one guy who finishes clan games in the first five goddamn minutes. Ah uh, yes, I've never been this guy because I have shit to do, but there's always that one guy that gets the maximum points allowed in like a few hours. Well, is that even possible? I don't know, I've never done the math, but uh, yeah. The point is, some people do it so quick, like how the heck? This ain't a speed run. You have an entire week. Calm down. I think I get it though. It's a huge flex to be the first person to reach 4,000 points for your clan, right? So yeah, there's nothing wrong with being this guy. Did I mention at the beginning of the video that there's nothing wrong with these people, by the way? I feel like I have to say that before people get offended. The guy who doesn't care about walls. Okay, technically this could be considered rushing, and we had that in the last episode, but not really. If I said leaving your walls two levels behind is rushing, I bet I'd trigger a lot of people, so I don't I don't consider it rushing, you know. 
But this type of player is pretty common. They're upgrading their base normally, but when it comes time to walls, eh, who needs walls anyways, right? We got wall breakers, jump spells, siege machines, why upgrade walls, you know? You can't claim to be max if your walls are not max. That, that's just how it is, okay? Also, walls are incredibly important. Just, just, just gonna leave that there. The one who only requests max troops. There's nothing wrong with requesting max troops if your clan has max troops. But why do people do this in clans that have very little max players? Like, what are you gonna wait for me to get on to donate? Not everyone is gonna have max troops to donate to you, so if you need troops ASAP, stop requesting max troops. Like I said, unless your clan has a lot of max players with a lot of max troops, you ain't getting jack sh But there's always that one guy, right? He just wants max troops and nothing else. The low attacker, who always attacks bases lower than him. I know most clans have this rule where your second attack is going lower for the three star, but some people, some people attack lower for no reason. Like, dude, if you can't attack a base similar to yours and do good, Why'd you opt in? I've seen many players who are in the top of the clan, but suddenly go for a base way lower than them. And then sometimes they get a three star and start bragging about how good that three star was. Like, no, stop. No one's impressed. You got a three star on a rush base, stop. Anyways, there's always that one dude who attacks lower bases and thinks he's doing an incredible job. The e drag spammer. <sighs> If you use e-drags, close your ears. <laughs> okay, don't. You see, I'm not the one to hate on a strategy, but remember when the Royal Giant was OP in Clash Royale? I know, different game, different situation, but not really. I mean, people hated the Royal Giant because it was just OP and it was easy to use, right? Now, I'm not saying all you have to do with e-drags is spam them and you win, but what I'm trying to say is that it's just easy to use. I've seen a lot of players just bring a lot of e-drags and 3-star a base without breaking a sweat like what? I'm not saying it's a bad strategy or you're lame for using it, but there's always that one guy that only uses a load of e-drags. Like as soon as someone gets to Tell Hall 11, that's their favorite troop. Not everyone, I'm just talking about some people. The OG. Can't forget about the OG, huh? These types of players are all around and it's usually easy to spot them by looking at their base and seeing their obstacles. Most OG players will have very old obstacles because, well, they've been playing for a very long time. Like me, I've been playing for so damn long I'm running out of space. And yeah, sometimes the game gets a little old and boring, but I always enjoy playing it here and there. There's no real definition of an OG for Clash of Clans because someone who's been playing for 5 years is also an OG, I guess. So just comment down below when you started playing, I'm always curious to know. The Trophy Pusher I don't blame him, I mean that win bonus is pretty sweet, eh? There's always that one guy in the clan who is always pretty high in trophies. Whether he's maxed or trying to farm up there, he's always got some trophies. Now there's a lot of reasons why people push. Like I said, it could be to win the bonus, it could be because they're maxed and have nothing else to do, or maybe they just enjoy being the number one in the clan. Hey, I've been there. Let me know down below if you have a trophy pusher in your clan. So guys, I think that should be it for this video of 10 types of Clash of Clans players, part 2. Or is it episode? Or what are we doing here? I don't know, sometimes I do episode, part, number. Anyways, feel free to comment down below your ideas for a part 3 in the future. A lot of these ideas from this video came from you guys, I think like half of them came from you guys, so uh, yeah, I definitely do read the comments. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, Thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!